Here we go, uh, another class in Paradise studying Python. Today I'm using Python version 3.3 and we're using Django 1.6. Today's topic is relationships. I'm just before class is due to start, so I'm going to go ahead and take a minute and test that I have a uh, good screen share going on. So I'm going to flash those screens right this second and make sure that uh, they are transmitting properly. Does appear to be working properly. Excellent. So there's that, and I'll probably stick on this screen at least for the moment. I'm also going to reference uh, the Django docs several times as we move through what we're doing. So there's what we're doing there. Note I'm using uh, docs version 1.6. So uh, to verify, I am broadcasting live on YouTube. I'm taking questions by uh, uh, G Plus Hangout, and I'm also taking questions via Skype. So if you have any questions as we're moving through this uh, video presentation today, please do speak up. Uh, I hope some of my students from previous days are uh, around and uh, will be sending us some feedback. <laughs> yes, I am in my bedroom. That's where I'm, the only spot big enough in my apartment to house this gigantic monitor system that I have going. So you get to live with the background of my purple bed and bean. So yay, good with that. Uh, any other questions from this past week? Throw them up and I'll answer them as we go along. Theoretically, the Q&A is up for this Hangout too, but I think it's still kind of quirky. It's only a few weeks old. So for today, we are discussing relationships. I showed you the uh, screen from Django. Let's go ahead and look at that again. These are the Django docs we're looking at, and I am in the relationships section under models. Uh, previously, we talked about models. Hopefully, you have a general idea of what a model is and uh, how those relationships work. and Hopefully we don't have to cover a bunch of that. I just got hit for an invite, so I'm going to invite those people into the Hangout. Yes, sorry for the delay. And so uh, last week we went over models. What I'm going to do now is we're going to start from scratch. We're just going to very quickly make a uh, Django application go, and uh, then we'll make a model and relate a few things in there, then I think we'll use the admin to cause some things into action. So how do we make a Django project? Hmm? Django admin, start project. Today's class will be the name of our project. Bingo, we're done. What's in here? Nothing. We move into our project. Ooh, if I can spell. What do we have? Manage. What's inside manage? Manage that defines what our settings is. And settings exists in an application with the same name. And here's our settings.py. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start a new app so we can have a nice uh, model to work with. So manage.py, start app. And we'll go ahead and match the Django docs here. Uh, what are they working on? So we'll call it autos. It's in automobiles. Yes. Now that now provides us not only with uh, today's class, which is our application folder, but automobiles, which is a sub app, an application. It's an application within uh, Django. It uses the Python style, so from here we can access it directly. Now, a couple of things we need to do when we add an application, one of which is we need to include it in our settings, so we're going to do that now. Actually, where is it? It's here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up in a better client for you so it makes it a little easier to see. Maybe, at least for me, it'll be easier to see. Navigating to it, on the other hand, that's 
the challenge. Here we go. Today's class, settings.py. We're going to open this nicely in Eclipse so we can have a look at it. A nice view. Drag that out. Here we go. Sharing it with you now. Maybe. Or not. Good for me. Yeah, it's uh, arguing with me. We'll see if we can get this going. Does this count? It does count. Okay, so I just have to be in the right window. Works for me. Okay, so here we are in our settings.py. We're going to move down to our installed apps. Now, we need to add our installed app that we just made moments ago, which we called... You are now done. I saved this file. I'm going to switch us back to our uh, nice command prompt. We are back here. It's happy. Okay, so our validate app is in there. Uh, we need to edit it somewhat. Right. This is what Django 1.6 starts you with. We're going to be editing our models. Our models is what we need to edit in order to add models <laughs> to our project. So we're going to go ahead and open that now. I am going to do it in a nice WYSIWYG editor, so it's not WYSIWYG, but at least it's WYSIWYG for me because it's color-coded. So... we go. I'm just trying to make it a little easier for you to read. And now sharing that out with you. Hopefully, <laughs> there we go. I'm still trying to get the hang of this tool. So here we go. We need to make a class, right, for a model. Now, once again, what I'm doing is I'm following the docs directly. So if you were following along previously, you just have this open. We're going to go ahead and create this this class right here, just like we had in the docs. I'm going to recreate this, and then we'll add some nice things to that so we can get the hang of what's going on here. So switching back to Eclipse to make it easy for everybody to follow. There's my Eclipse. So class manufacturer models dot model. A couple of things on style, right? Starts with a capital, which is appropriate. We're gonna call this U Factor R's of cars. Yes, yeah, spelling is always fun. And we know it comes with an ID, so that's probably enough for the moment. Let's go ahead and put a pass in here. We know that's going to exist. We're also going to make class car of models dot model. What's this? And you factor. I should have picked a different. Uh, Different demo, I hate spelling this word. There we go. So, man, you, I get to spell it again. Equals models dot foreign key, and we're looking for man, you, actor. Did I spell it right? Nope. Gosh, I'm having all kinds of fun with that. There we are, it's all matched up nice. Remember, one blank line at the end, two blank lines per class. Yeah, I missed one up there, too. So how do we see if this is actually working? Well, the easy way to check for sure is to just run a validate. So we'll go ahead and switch back to our uh, uh, prompt. Here's our prompt going on really nicely here. And we'll do manage.py validate. Ooh, what's wrong with this? What's wrong? It's going to error. I'm in the wrong place, right? I was just showing you what was in that folder. There we go. Validate. 
Yeah, we're happy. Zero errors found. We're working in uh, Python 3.3, which is why we're getting this uh, warning here. It's nothing that we need worry ourselves about. But let's go ahead and look back at our uh, Eclipse and have a look at this model file and see what it's actually doing for us. So we have a car. Ooh. And that car refers to a manufacturer. Manufacturer is nothing at this point. So we've validated that there's a relationship here, but what's it actually doing? Well, this is a required field. So before we can have a car, we must have a manufacturer. So let's just randomly make a manufacturer. It doesn't have a name or anything. We'll just make it from scratch. So let's go ahead and switch back to our prompt and we'll make it right there. Yeah, I'll put both of those on the screen next time. And we'll do both at the same time. Just want to make sure it's big enough so you can see it's always been difficult in previous videos. All right, here. So we're going to do what to get to a nice prompt where we can deal with that? Manage.py shell. This will give us basically the Django components so we can deal with them directly. So from automobiles dot models import manufacturer I think I got it right that time how fun is that yeah I got it right so first what is this let's have a look man I really hate typing this word obviously there we go base model and that's right we named it models dot model so it is it's a model base so what are we going to do with it well let's uh, make one is that going to work? Can we just make one? I missed a step. We'll go ahead and do this because I have a feeling you're going to... Gosh, <laughs> I need to make a shortcut and or use a smaller variable name. Okay. Oh my gosh, something went wrong as I told you. I expected this problem. Uh, no such table. See, it says no such table here. <laughs> so we got to do that first. So before we shell, what do we do in order to get our tables instantiated? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Manage stop pi. And I have somebody asking a question. Manufacturer. Yeah, okay. Give me a hard time. Good times. So <laughs> manage dot pi. Sync db. What does this do? It runs the equivalent to a create statement inside your database. So here we go. Do, 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 do. This is the first time I ran it. Uh, so I'm going to create a super user. Llama, Llama's Rock. Uh, random password number one. There we go, through happily. It, look at all the tables it created. Why did it create all of this? I've mentioned this before, I'll mention it again. We need a user object. Uh, users have permissions and groups. We deal with authentication when we do logins for the admin. So, of course, we come with authentication and logging is built into Django. So, these are the two that we just created here, automobiles manufacturer and automobiles car. So, those both were just created. Where did they create them? In our nice DB SQLite 3 here, it's now 37K bytes. So at least we have our nice little database going. So let's go back in manage.py shell. Now we have a database to actually work with now. So let, oh my gosh, do I have to spell it again? No, I don't. There we go. Manufacturer objects create. That's not going to work either. There we go. I need to import. Now we can do our manufacturer objects create. Five, four, three, two, one. Yay. So we have a manufacturer. What can we tell about our manufacturer? Well, not much. Uh, we have one. Yay, we can look at that one. There's the one item. We can examine the ID of that item. <laughs> ID number one. We could create another one. If we created another one, what would its ID be? Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So it would be the second one. So its ID would be two. Okay, so yes, little chatter, little chatter. No serious questions, though. Serious questions only. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so now we know we can make a manufacturer. Can we make a car? Looking at the models there, this is a trick question. Can we make a car? 
So car objects create answer, 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 negative. Why? Because our manufacturer can't be null. And so we're trying to set it to null. We do already have a manufacturer though. So what can we do? Manufacturer R E R. <laughs> Love it. Equals and we have it in there, man you factor R E R objects get ID equals one. And this will create a car pointing to our manufacturer. Bada bing. So now if we pull all cars, how many cars are there? One, that's right. But it relates to something else. So let's go ahead and assign this. All right, so now we have a single car. So our car has a man you back. I swear. <laughs> R-E-R. I'm going to learn to spell this easily now. And we can say ID 1. So this car's manufacturer is the first one in the list. So hopefully you've now seen the relationship. I'm going to switch back so we can look directly at our models here. Where is it? I got all these windows open now. There we go. So we made a manufacturer and then we made a car and linked it to that manufacturer. This is a required field. Could we have made it not required? Yes. How do we do that? Blank equals true. Null equals true. This allows this field to be blank, but right now we don't want that. We want it to be required. Now this is kind of boring a little bit because our card doesn't actually have anything, but uh, it's a good start to show you the relationship between car and manufacturer. Also note, that a car only has one manufacturer. A foreign key establishes a single relationship, not more than one. So this is one of the most common used uh, relationships that we get going. These uh, equates to joins in SQL and uh, allows you to go from this one object to any one of a number of these objects. This is the basis of a relational database, RDBS, yes, relational database system, right? So foreign key. It's basically one of these goes here, and there are many of these here. So we can call it a one to many, uh, but uh, it's more important that you understand the function behind what's going on here. This is a pointer. I'm pointing from this model to a key in this model. So what actually gets stored in this manufacturer is physically a number, probably the number one based on what we just did. So when we call from the database, however, this is normalized into a relationship with manufacturer so we can get uh, ID and other things going on there. So basic relationship foreign key allows me to point from this to this. Now if I wanted to have something that had more than one, how's that work? And that's definitely the next part in the Django docs. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that directly. Actually, no, I take it back. I'm going to go ahead and leave this here and we'll go through the entire process again so you can uh, really, really understand what's going on and make sure that we are really up to date with your skills so that you could easily generate the things you need to generate. So here we are here. I'm going to exit this. Here we are in our project. And their next part is pizzas, really. So once again, a really, uh, really hard word to spell. So bear with me. 
okay, what am I editing? I'm about to edit models.py right there. I'm going to move back up so we're back in our route. I'm going to open it in Eclipse and then I'll share that with you. Here we go. This is where we. Oh, I just opened this. So I need to open the other one. Excuse me. We are going to restaurant models. There we are. Empty, empty, empty. Just trying to get the hang of spelling that because I'm going to have to spell it a bunch. Getting ahead of myself. So what do we need to do here? We need to copy. Yay! We're going to copy directly from the Django docs. Two, two slots. Uh, so I still got an extra one. So this comment. Bad, bad, bad. No, 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 no. Always end with a period. humor going along there. But here we're dealing with something different. Here we're dealing with many-to-many -many fields. This is not a one-to-one -one that we had just moments ago with born key. We're now dealing with ooh, maybe many-to-many. -many. So with foreign key, it, there was only one of these to this, right? One car to manufacturer, one-to-one, one-to-one. -one. One -one. Now here, we have many, so our pizza can have more than one topping. See, there's an S here, toppings. So how do we make that happen, the many-to-many -many field? How does that work, IRL? Well, first things first. First, we need to make sure that this is kosher, which it is. I'm going to save this file, and now we're going to switch back to our trusty, handy-dandy uh, shell. Do -do 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 -do. Oop, pick the right window. There we go. So here we are again. Don't forget to do what you did last time. Manage that by sync db. Note it's only creating new tables, which it didn't. Oh, what step did I forget? Anybody? Anybody? I'm gonna bring it up, and then I will tell you what the answer to the question is. No one's listening. I'm all by myself. I know that's not true, but nobody wants to answer the question. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. And now switching so you can see what I'm doing. There you go. What did I forget? I forgot to put it in the right place. By adding it here, my it adds it to the installed apps tuple, and that defines what applications are actually used by Django. So we have to do that before we sync, otherwise it won't work. So now I'm going to switch back to my prompt so you can see what I'm doing there. And I will definitely open this in uh, Eclipse next time so we can stay inside the same environment. Manage.py validate. See, zero hours found, so everything's happy. Now we'll go ahead and sync db. Yay, now we created restaurant topping. Ooh, what is this? Pizza toppings and pizza. So, if you remember, not moments ago, we only created two classes. We created the class topping and we created the class pizza. But if we look at what's actually created by the database, it creates restaurant topping, restaurant pizza toppings, and restaurant pizza. Now, we created pizza and we created topping. What's this? Well, that's how we cause many-to-many -many relationships to exist. It's called an intermediate table. And by using a many-to-many -many field, what you're telling Django to do is seamlessly use an intermediate table so you don't see what's going on. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm now going to uh, show you how to use that many-to-many -many field that we just created. So manage.py shell. Now we're 
from restaurant. Please don't tell my mother. <laughs> Okay, and we're also going to import pizza. I've got a couple of comments here. I'm going to pause for a minute and read what those are. Everybody's happy that it's uh, you can pause and come back. It's like Michael on DVR. Ooh, now here's a really good question. Best practice to use PK or ID on a model. Man, I had knockdown, drag out fights at uh, Google over that subject. Uh, the answer is do one and stick with it. The reason that I like PK is because then your primary key can change to something other than ID, and Django seamlessly will take care of that. But ID is so standard that uh, uh, when I read through and I see ID, I know we're talking about the only primary key, and it's an auto number field called ID. So it's case by case. I would say, well, probably best practice is to use ID, but PK allows you a bunch of flexibility, so really take it into consideration when you're doing your framework to begin with. Okay, moving right along, I'm sure we'll cover that again shortly. So uh, looking back, I'm just going to look briefly because I paused and I want to make sure everybody's on the same page. We're talking about this many-to-many -many relationship here. We're going from topping and toppings in pizza. Okay, so now back to our prompt so we can go over it bit by bit. So now what can't we create? We can't create a pizza. Why? Why? The answer is you can't because many-to-many -many fields are not required by default. Haha, -ha, fooled you. So anyway, our pizza now, however, has no toppings. Boo. So a pizza with no toppings, rock on. A pizza with no toppings is uh, rather boring, right? So if we pull out our pizza, we know we created same, same, right? We have an ID. We know it's pizza number one, but what are its toppings? Huh? Well, toppings is a connector. It's more like a list, but in this case, you can treat it as a manager. So just like with any other manager, you could uh, do get to get one or filter to get uh, whatever you'd like. It's still going to be nothing because there are no toppings on this pizza. So we need to add a topping. But uh, our problem is, is that under toppings, we have a total of zero. So we need to make one. Yay. Now how many toppings do we have? One. Yay. All right. So now what are we going to do with that topping? We're going to take our pizza. Hello, pizza. Right, we created a topping just above here. We created a topping. Create. And now I'm going to put that topping on my pizza. Toppings add. Here I'm fetching, and I'm going to put it on there. I've showed you multiple ways of fetching today. Pick one. Probably get, but in this case, I uh, am working with the first record. That's a proper slice that is good form. Pizza dot toppings I N G S all oh, there we go. And if we look at our pizza topping all oh, zero. Let's look at the ID on that. One. And our pizza's ID is also one, I believe. So we have one pizza with one topping, and that's all we have to work with. 
So the question is now, if I want to add another topping, what do I do? So let's make another topping. There, I just created another topping. So now, let's have a look, see how many toppings do we have? Two. Yay, what's the step? The second topping's ID going to be? Zero, one. That's the second one in the list. Its ID is going to be, drum roll please, the number two. Yes, that's correct. So now what we want to do is to our pizza, we want to add a topping. Except this time, two. Now, How many toppings do we have? Two. What are they? Topping one and topping two. Rather boring, but true. Uh, let's uh, values list ID. And you'll see that we have topping one and topping two on our toppings. So. Now we've gone over two totally different kinds of relationships, one-to-one -one and many-to-many. -many. So I would assume at this point everybody has tons of questions and it's like, how do I do this and how do I do that? It's kind of hard for me to tell when nobody's asking questions, but uh, we'll go ahead and uh, expand our model out a little bit here and try and run some queries and see if we can get uh, something a little more advanced going. Yeah, that's too much. So let's go ahead and stick with uh, our first. So I'm going to take us back now. We'll start with uh, one. To, we'll start with foreign keys because that makes uh, single relationship. So hopefully that'll be a little bit easier for you to understand. So I'm um, selecting models and uh, I'm moving back to our auto manufacturer and we'll. Uh, add some detail into that. Oops, there we go. Trouble moving between these screens. So, note, if you change anything here, you have two choices. Whoa, that was fun. Number one, nuke your database and start again what we will do. Number two, hand migrate your tables using a SQL prompt or tool. And number three is, I'm waiting, waiting, answering questions. Uh, I'm sorry, somebody's having problems viewing. That's really unfortunate. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, try clicking again by going through my YouTube channel. Hopefully that helps her out. Anyway, your third option. Okay, the answer is south. Now, in very short order, Django will include South. Uh, I believe it's uh, 1.7 now includes South. So what South allows you to do is migrate schemas. So I could add things in here without having to nuke my data to begin with. <laughs> yes, people are yelling South in channel, so yes. The answer is south. South is correct. So uh, if you, well, I'm not covering south today, we may need to cover south in a future uh, class because it's a super important topic. So if you have questions about south, I will cover that in a future class. So moments ago we had pass here. Let's go ahead and do something that I use a lot of. Name equals models dot uh, char field max length equals 20. And how about we give uh, our car a name as well. Now we're starting to get a little more interesting. I'm still going to use uh, a prompt 
to add and remove things from this, but I think we need to switch to using the Django admin, which is what I uh, showed you last week. So I'm still going to go ahead and do this from scratch at a prompt, but we're about to switch to the Django admin and do it through a GUI instead. Okay, to show you, I'm going to nuke it, and we're going to start over. Uh, yeah, well, that's what I get for trying to work in Windows. All right. Yeah, it's actually deleted. I've already deleted it. Okay, so manage.py, sync db. Boom, yes, llama, llama. Happy, happy, happy. It created everything, including our automobiles and our restaurant. So let's go ahead and get right to it. I don't want pizza. I want automobiles. Ah, it didn't keep, so I'm going to do it by hand. Automobiles. Uh, Models import. Okay, don't do that at home. I'm just tired of writing it. Uh, M equals manufacturer. <laughs> Name equals Ford. Okay, so now we have an M. I probably should have named it F. In fact, let's. Uh, it's not skip style. So there's our, ooh, that's fun. How many manufacturers do we have in the database right now? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, let's have a look. Two. <laughs> it's because I, na I did create twice, and regardless of the variable I named it. Okay, so let's just do it once. Right here, I deleted all the objects in the database. Right. Okay, strange people messaging me strange things in Skype. So here's our Ford ID 1. I nuked everything in the manufacturer's table, then I created an object called Ford. And here's our Ford object ID. Now let's go ahead and uh, pull the manufacturer table. We should have how many? One. Let's pull the first record. And its ID should be one, as we said. And the name should be Bueller, 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 Ford. OK, good times. So we kept that in a variable here. So we do have Ford as our manufacturer. Okay, So let's make another one as well. Okay, so now uh, you want to see them all by name? Let's use a list comprehension. Oh, let's give it a really good name. I'm going to teach a good style. So this would be. I always spell it wrong. At least I spell it wrong consistently. What did I do wrong? Did I spell it wrong? Anyway, let's uh, have a look at these here. So there are two objects. We have Ford and we have Toyota. Yeah, I'm going to skip the comprehension. It's just messing with me right this second. So now we need a car, right? I believe we imported car. Yes, we did. So let's create a car. Uh, J. 
objects create and now we have name equals ooh mustang and we have man u factor er equals board how happy is that And now we have our car. Our car should be ID 1. Yes. Okay, so now ooh, who's our manufacturer? Car.manufacturer. Especially if I can't spell. So now we have demonstrated a foreign key relationship from a prompt. This should allow you to create within Django by using a shell pretty easily. But uh, I think, as is typical, everybody wants to use a nice GUI WYSIWYG uh, interface, so I'm probably going to uh, throw together the admin and uh, let you edit it directly through the admin. We went over that last week, so it should not be new information. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my Eclipse and we'll navigate to that admin and start hacking at it immediately. Okay, so file open and here's the models we're working with. We're going to open the admin for that. Very first thing we need to do is And we have and actually it's spelled to always do things in the right order. In this particular case, I'm dealing with alphabetical order. Uh, we can sort by modules depending on uh, if you're using strict PEP8 standards or not. So admin register car oops, car. Uh, and it's admin site and admin site register and you factor get the hang of that yet always end on one blank line I did not include an opening doc string Okay, so this is actually, actually ready to rock and roll. So how do we get it to run? It's quite simple, actually. I'm going to go switch back to our prompt so we can see me running the server. Here we go. I'm going to exit. There we go. There's our server running. So now I'm going to bring it up over here. And you'll see that I just brought it up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share that with you now so you can see how, what's going on there. Share. Oh, where, oh, where did my share go? Where are you? Hmm. Well, maybe I'll shove it in this window. And uh, we'll just drop this in there then. There we go. So there's our congratulations. It worked, but the piece we want more than anything else is the admin. And it's a llama. And there we go. As you can see here, the two things that we registered in our admin already show up here. Our manufacturers, we already created two objects. The first one is Ford. Second object is Toyota. And cars, we already created an object, Mustang. And it has the second one selected. I'm sorry, the first one selected, so that's obviously Ford. So you see you're pretty good in the admin, but doesn't look quite right. And it's 
fairly easy to deal with that. So I'm going to go ahead and step you through that right now because uh, relationships, when you're dealing with them, it's really nice to have these drop downs populate nicely and look nice. So we're going to go ahead and deal with that right this second. <clears throat> and we do that. Let's go ahead and switch back to our nice eclipse. There we go. How do we do that, you might ask? Are you asking? I don't know if you're asking. So let's start with manufacturer. So Django uses Unicode to output a basic something of a class. Now we can just return stuff here, but then every single entry in a manufacturer table would show up as the word stuff. So that's not going to fly. As we've discussed in previous classes, we are inside a object class. And therefore, by including this keyword here, we then become self-referential. So we can actually look up what record we're talking about. Now, I could put the ID here, but then it's going to be 0123. If we put name here, then what we get out is more what we're looking for. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. All I did was save. I didn't do anything else. I'm going to switch to our... Uh, shell so you can see what happened in the server when I saved it restarted itself and therefore recompiled the pieces of Python that it needs in order to run the latest version so now I'm going to switch to our neat little server I have it over here someplace here we go now, see, before it said manufacturer object here, I'm going to click refresh, and now it says Ford. Along with that, if we look in manufacturers here, or not. Hmm. Ford. Very nice. So that'll clean that up so you get very nice callbacks. And uh, that helps with making your foreign keys look proper when you're putting them in objects like this. So we also dealt with one-to-many relationships. I wanted to show you how to do that in the admin as well. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back over here to Eclipse. Here we go. We're going to close these and we're going to open our, what was it, restaurant, there we go. Now we have our restaurant models. And how about, ooh, I don't know why I'm clicking file. And we also want our admin for that. So we have a topping. Let's go ahead and give this a name to, how about I steal that from the other one. Save, save everyone a few seconds of me typing things out yet again. Okay, and we're going to give our pizza a name too. Now, that may be uh, counterintuitive, but feel free to put any kind of things you'd like anywhere. I'm just trying to give us a little bit uh, to work with here. So our server automatically restarted when I did that, and now our database is out of date, so I need to nuke that. So I'm going to switch over there. I'm going to nuke that database. You s will see me doing it really quick. And then uh, we'll go straight into making the admin so we can make that go correctly. Okay, now manage.py sync db. You can create a fixture that will create these uh, super users for you, and there are other ways to get around this. Uh, I'm doing this over and over again to try and drill it into your head how easy it is to deal with uh, Django for these issues. So now I'm back back into the server again. I now have all my tables. Everything should be clear. One thing I'm missing is having 
the admin populated. So we're going to go ahead and switch back to our uh, Eclipse. There we go. And let's go to the admin and we'll go Ooh, that, oh, I hit caps lock. Okay, and then it's admin site register pizza. We also need to register topping. One line at the end, happy, happy, happy. And I'll switch us to that view so we can look and see how the admin has changed. The server, of course, automatically restarted itself, so here we are, happy, happy. We're now dealing with pizzas and toppings. Pizzas, we have no pizzas done. Ooh, now a new pizza. Now we need to add toppings to it. How about first topping? Ooh, still says topping object, so how do we deal with that? We'll update that in a minute. But I'm going to add a second one here just to show you that our one entry can have many things attached to it. So here's a really nice uh, example of how to use many to many. This is, uh, you can select which one you want or more than one. I'm going to go ahead and click save here. It's again, it's this pizza object. So let's clean this up briefly and uh, then I want to show you a better widget for this. So let's switch back to our clips. Here we are. Okay, that'll just clear that up and make it a little more readable for us. Uh, as far as the widgets are concerned, and now we're starting to have a little bit of fun here. So I need to suck in my example real quick. So I have that going. Hang on, I have really nice notes for this piece. Uh, this might give you a second to ask any last minute questions you might have as I'm fumbling trying to find what I'm looking for. I am, yeah, there we go. And I am looking for oh <laughs> yeah I'm trying too hard of course I'm trying too hard I always try too hard uh, well, where did my window go I love it here we go so we are a class and we are going for pizza admin and we have admin model admin and we're going to do I believe it's inlines oh no 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 sorry 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 horizontal will get us what we're looking for for this uh, for this round and we are talking about toppings Okay, so all I did was save. I'm going to switch us back to our admin here. Maybe, oh, okay. I also need to register this. Yay, 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 yay. Hmm. It's arguing with me. I like it when it argues with me. Not really. 
I will double check on this. Let's see what's going on here. Hmm. Not sure why I'm not getting this to come out properly. Anyway, so uh, I'll double check on that in a minute, and uh, maybe I'll go over that next time, and we'll swap out that uh, that widget nicely next time rather than this time uh, to make sure that I don't miss anything and uh, spew data at you rather than getting it right the first time out of the barn. So uh, just to recap, we went over two kinds of relationships, many-to-many, and we also went over foreign key. And you saw that there are two different kinds of widgets associated with that. Under uh, You either have a drop-down or you have a multi-select. And uh, since, yeah, I'm definitely out of time, I'll definitely go over uh, widgets and how to swap out widgets for better widgets and how to uh, master the uh, Django admin a little bit more. But at this point, you should be far enough along to be able to create your own models and uh, move data in and out of those, and now you can use the Django admin. If you review previous classes for views, you can use a simple class-based view to uh, and a list view to look at the data inside this and put it out on your own web template. Uh, makes uh, accessing data models very simple and easy to do. Well, hopefully today's class was uh, helpful and got you further along in your journey. Uh, next time around, we'll cover more on the admin and see if we can take this to the next level and start working on a, on a full-fledged app using both templates and the admin together to try and build something. If you have a few minutes this week, try and build like a simple blog application where people can respond to you or something that requires a many-to-many -many relationship like build a restaurant or a more about cars, what other kinds of details can it have. Build things like that and uh, we'll go over them together and hopefully you can ask more questions uh, in the future. Thanks so much for uh, being here and having fun with me in this Hangout and our class and I hope to see all of you again very soon and go over some more Python. Please do send me questions if you have any. You can reach me via any of the social medias email or any other method. Thanks. I hope you have a great day.